But you have to master, you have to learn. It's not just like telling him the Quran says this and the Quran says that. Wala taqulu salata. The Quran says, Lakat kafar Allah jina qalu inna Allah al-Masih ibn Maryam. All true. But you have to use his book against him. Qul hatu burhan. He produces the burhan, use his book, and say, look, where is this? What does it say? What does it mean? Talk to him. And inshallah, you will succeed with him as with any other people. But you have to do homework. We are not doing homework. I think one more question and we should end because people have been here for quite a time. One more question and we will end. Last question. Yes. is it that Christianity is defending the Jews? This is again a question of brainwashing, programming. You see, we all get programmed, we all get brainwashed into good or bad, anything. The human mind is made that way. If you don't program it right, it will be automatically be programmed wrong. You see, this brain is alive, active, you keep on pushing anything that you want, any fable you want, it can absorb, any rubbish you put in, it will take. It's made that way. So, the Jews have done a beautiful job. They have done a beautiful job, you see, in programming the Christian. With regards to the birthright, they believe, the Jews, maybe sincerely, they believe that Allah gave Palestine to them. It was promised to them. And this is in the book, the Bible. And this Bible, the Jews as well as the Christians own the Old Testament. They say is the word of God, the Old Testament, which is actually the book of the Jews. is the Bible of the Jews. The Old Testament is the Bible of the Jews. The Old and the New put together is the Bible of the Christians. They accept the Jewish book as Allah's wahi, and with their own, they've made it into one book. But if you take the New Testament out, that is the Bible of the Jews. So in that Bible, there are certain verses which they understand, who the Jews, that Allah Baritala gave them the title deed to Palestine. And this they program the Christians. They say, look, God has promised Palestine to us. So the Christians, they watch the scene. They can see the injustices that are being done to our Muslim brethren and the Palestinians, as a whole, whether Christian or Muslim, injustice. But in the hearts of heart, in the mind, they say, look, but God promised it to them. This is supposed to go to the Jews. Why are these Arab barbarians are coming in the way? In the way of this happy transfer taking place. God's word being fulfilled. This is programming brainwashing. And they base this on a verse from the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, where it says, as if God is speaking to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, I will give unto thee, I will give you, and to thy seed after thee, and your children after you, all the land of Canaan, means Palestine, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Means I will be their protector, to see that they get it. So the Christian reads it, he says, yes. The Jew says, you see, this is my title deed to Palestine. And the Christian says, yes, I can see that. So now what? He says, your land is being stolen from your hands. But he said, look, but this is what God wanted. How can we come in the way? See, he knows that it's immoral. He knows it's wrong. But if this is God's will. You want to go against God's will? He says, no. So let it happen. I don't know what's the philosophy behind all this. But this is what God wanted to do, so let them have it. This is it, the program. But if you analyze this, you see, I was telling somebody today, that we have to open a second front against the Jews. You see, during the war, World War II, Russia was crying, second front, second front. You know, the whole burden of the German might was on Russia. The Germans marched into Russia 2,000 kilometers non-stop. By the time they finished, they killed 20 million Russians. They were crying, second front, second front, to take the pressure from off us. I said, now that second front, we have to open against the Jews. Not militarily. This I say, I leave it to you, my Palestinian brethren, my Arab brethren. Whatever you think is best, you do. I will not teach you how 
to fight the Jews. That is your business. You go and find out for yourself. But the second front is an intellectual battle. You see, because intellectually they brainwash the Christians. Now we have to reprogram the Christian. Intellectually. So this principle Allah says, Kul hatu burhanaku. Same, same. Again and again. They say, you're not reading the Quran. Allah is telling you the secret. How to do the job. Kul hatu burhanaku. So they say, here's my burhan, my proof, my certificate, my title deed. So let's read it. What does it say? It says, I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee all the land of Canaan. Who? To Ibrahim alayhi salam and his to his children. So ask them. Ask the Christian. Ask the Jew. Did Ibrahim alayhi salam get it? What was promised? If it is Allah's promise, wa'adallahu haq. And they also say that in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, how do we know whether the thing that is promised was from God or not? He said, if the thing does not happen, if that does not come to pass, that is the thing the Lord has not spoken. But the Prophet has spoken is presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So according to the understanding, a Prophet can speak presumptuously. Yeah, just on his own whim, he can tell you things. So, did, they, did God make such a promise? If he did, he would fulfill it. So when we read about Ibrahim alayhi salam in the Bible, he said the day when he died, his son Ismail and Ishaq went to bury the father. And there was no land to bury him. So they went and bought a piece of land. Because the Bible says that when he died, he did not own one square foot of land, not enough land to rest his foot upon. It was not one square foot of land Ibrahim alayhi salam owned. He died a pauper. So, that it could not be the promise of God. If God said, I will give you the whole of Canaan, he would have given it to him, but he didn't own one square foot. Says the Bible, your Bible. So that means it could be from God. Number two, if it is from God, I said, look, it says, I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Who is the seed of Abraham? So they said, the Jews. I said, no doubt the Jews are the seed of Abraham. But are they the only seed? I said, in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, no less than 12 places, Hazrat Ismail is spoken of as the son and seed of Abraham. Chapter 16, and he says, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, your prayer. I have heard thee. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation, because he is thy seed. And for, as for Ishmael, thy son. And as for Ishmael, thy seed. No less than twelve places. So, if Ishmael alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, is the son and seed of Abraham, and Ishaq alayhi salam is the son of, the son of the seed of Abraham, why shouldn't you both live in peace and harmony as brothers in this holy land? So, you've got to reprogram the person. He's already programmed, you've got to deprogram him, reprogram him, which you're not doing. I said, we have to now open a second front, an intellectual battle we must give, side by side with whatever else you are doing. This is the, our difficulty. The Christian world is programmed, brainwashed, and we are doing nothing to reprogram him. Uh, please excuse me, there is some complaint from the traffic police outside that the car with the number 96696 and 37800 and 16801. They are obstructing the other cars outside. And uh, uh, here we come to the end of our lecture. Thank you very much, Mr. Didat, for giving us your time. And thank you for attending and listening to Mr. Didat. Before you go, tomorrow there is a lecture in the Rashid Friday. Oh, on Friday in Rashid Hospital at 8.30. What's the title? Uh, the title will be Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the natural successor of uh, you.